This is lesson four, four, part two. In this lesson, we're going to continue factoring quadratic expressions. We will learn how to factor trinomials where a is not equal to one. We will also learn to factor completely by factoring out a GCF first and then continuing to factor. And we'll also learn how to factor a perfect square trinomial. So we begin with our perfect square trinomials. These are perfect square trinomials because the first term is a perfect square, the last term is a perfect square, and the middle term is the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term doubled. So this would give us 12x. If we double that, we get 24. That's why this is a perfect square trinomial. But we have another thing going on here with this first term, which is that there is a GCF. So we first factor out the GCF, which leaves us with x squared minus 6x plus 9. But if we look at this, this is still a perfect square trinomial because x squared is a perfect square, 9 is a perfect square, and x times 3 doubled is 6. So this will factor as x minus 3 and x minus 3. So what you notice when you factor a perfect square trinomial is you get two factors that are identical. So then you would write it as x minus 3 quantity squared, meaning we have two factors that are the same. In the second example, this is a perfect square because 64x squared is a perfect square, 1 is a perfect square, and 8x times 1 is 8, and then double that, and it gives us 16. Since this is negative here, we're going to want a minus, and then quantity squared. When you're trying to factor trinomials where your leading coefficient is something other than 1, the factoring becomes more difficult. So I'm going to give you a method that works, but if you don't understand it or you can't remember it, there are other methods which I will explain in class. But I'm going to just explain this one method um, on the video. So when we were factoring before where the leading coefficient was 1, we put the 12 on the top of this x. What's different is when you have a leading coefficient, you're going to multiply first. So 2 times 12 is 24, that goes on top. And then the B value, 11, still goes on the bottom. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make 24, and they add to make 11. So those two numbers would be 8 and 3. Okay, so far it doesn't seem too hard, I know. Um, but then there's this additional step you have to take. Since we multiplied by 2 here at the beginning, we have to divide by 2 right here at the end. Our factors are not 8 and 3, but they're 8 divided by 2 and 3 divided by 2. 8 divides by 2 and that equals 4, but 3 does not divide by 2. So what we do with those is we um, take our first factor, which is going to be x plus 4, but our second factor, factor which is a fraction, uh, has the denominator as a leading coefficient and the numerator as your constant term. All right, so let's try that with our second example here. If we do 4 times negative 3, we get negative 12. And then our B value, negative 4, goes on the bottom. So two numbers that multiply to make negative 12 and add to make negative 4 would be negative 6 and positive 2. So then, since we multiplied by 4 at the beginning, we have to divide by 4 at the end. Okay, both of these fractions will reduce, and we do need to reduce them. So 2 fourths is 1 half, and negative 6 fourths is negative 3 halves. So our factors become denominator, x, numerator, and denominator, x, numerator. So now you can check this answer to make sure that it works by foiling your two factors. So if we foil this, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 
On the outside, we get plus 2x. On the inside, negative 6x. And last, negative 3. So simplifying that, we get 4x squared minus 4x minus 3. Since this equals our original um, trinomial, then it is factored correctly as 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 1.